What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about one trade that I made today on the 15th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at what Trump, you know, the gist of this Trump speech that we got today, and taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that performed very well today as well. But before we do get into this, for all of you out there that enjoy the content here, that find value in this content, feel free to hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow, and I appreciate you guys more than you know for subscribing to the channel, hitting that like button, and of course, keeping up with these videos. It means a lot to me. So let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall stock market. And many of you already know this by now, but today we had a ridiculous green day. The SPX, the S&P 500 today, guys, was up around 1.09% at the close, up around $30. The Dow Jones today, ridiculous day, guys, nearly a 450-point day, up around 1.74%. And the NASDAQ, guys, performed the weakest out of the three indices, but it was still up around $45 up around 0.63% at <clears throat> excuse me at the close. So, let's talk about guys, you know, what ended up happening today in terms of these technicals. You know, not much different from yesterday, guys. We're still up trending here. We're still trending in this channel, but the one thing I want to point out here is that we are approaching that resistance at around $2,800 that we've been talking about over these past couple of videos here in the SPX, the S&P 500, the next resistance being at around 2815. And if we do end up breaking these points, guys, which in this point in time, it does seem like it's very possible with this trade optimism that we've been having in the stock market, right? And honestly, we've been killing it over the past couple of weeks, you know, we are going to be testing the all-time highs potentially if we do end up breaking these two resistance barriers. And let's say we get up another 2-3%, we should be, you know, out of these two resistances potentially heading back to that all-time high. But taking a look here, guys, on a little bit of a closer basis, for those of you guys that have not been paying attention to these videos, we've been talking about this channel that the SPX and honestly the entire markets, the NASDAQ, the Dow, have, have been trading in pretty much, right? We've been trading in this channel pretty much perfectly, right? We can see the pop-up, the resistance, the support, the resistance, the support. And in yesterday's video, we pretty much called out what ended up happening today, right? In yesterday's video, for those of you guys that didn't watch, I was talking about how these two days of consolidation were a point in time where we could be just consolidating to push up for a higher high due to us not being really towards the top of the channel, right? We were more in the middle of the channel here, and we've seen the SPX do this a couple of weeks ago where we saw two days of consolidation before popping up to the top of the channel when we were in the middle of the channel because like this moment about two weeks ago we can see we were in the middle of the channel not quite at the top yet so we had those two consolidation days then we popped up more towards the top and then we ended up pulling back right and we saw the same thing here we were in the middle of the channel had two consolidation days which is why I really thought and expected that we could potentially be heading back up for another green day more towards the top of the channel which is exactly what we ended up seeing today we're up at about 27.75 60 at the close of the market, which is right at that target price where we were talking about a couple of days ago where the SPX could end up going to if it does reach the top, right? We were talking about, you know, potentially heading to 2780, 2790 before pulling back to, you know, more closer to the support of the channel. So we saw that we broke this resistance this morning, guys, which really was the first step to us heading to the top of the channel. We pretty much ended up doing that today. So keep an eye in these next couple of trading days guys and remember this Monday we are closed the market is closed this Monday just keep an eye next week are we going to end up heading up more are we going to end up breaking the resistance of this channel maybe that 2800 level which could mean more green to come 
Or are we going to find a top like we did a couple of weeks ago towards the top of this channel, maybe 5, 10, 15 points higher where we are right now, and we slowly start to pull back and start to test the support of this channel, you know, and this 50 SMA here, which is pretty much the support of the channel as well. So keep an eye on those very key uh, spots here, very key technicals, guys. It's very, very important to see, you know, where the market is going to be headed over these next couple of days. And also, of course, these resistances and always look at multiple time frames during your analysis to get a better idea of the entire picture, right? It always helps not only looking at one time frame, let's say for the 184 uh, hour chart, for example, but always look at the intraday chart you know, the five day, five minute chart to see what's going on in the current week we're in, right? In this case, we're seeing higher highs, higher lows. We can see this is an uptrend pattern and we could expect more uptrend movement due to this pattern. Little things like that, guys, it'll really help you when you're doing your technical analysis. So since very similar here to the, uh, you know, SPX guys, the Dow Jones, we actually ended up breaking that resistance today at around $25,750 that we were talking about in yesterday's video, which is a very good sign that we're potentially heading up to the next resistance at around $26,200 to eventually test, potentially test that all-time high that we do see here in the Dow Jones, nearly at $27,000, guys. So honestly, right now, we're only 1,000 points away from all-time highs, guys. This is absolutely insane. If you were to, you know, buy stocks towards the end of December, even if you were planning on swing trading them, not necessarily, you know, buying long-term positions, if you were to just buy 5, 10 large-cap stocks, towards the end of December, you would be pretty much green all throughout your portfolio for the most part, right? Because, you know, a lot of the Dow 30 companies have been doing very well, right, over these past couple of months, obviously because this index is nearly up 15, 16% during that time period. So guys, you know, we're really close to potentially testing all-time highs again to see how close we are to be exact. We're about 4 or 5% off. You know, if we do end up coming to a trade agreement here, if there is more optimism in the stock market, we can definitely, honestly, guys, hit that all-time high in terms of the Dow Jones pretty soon here, but let's not get ahead of ourselves, guys, because that is another 4 or 5% above. We have been seeing a lot of green lately. We are towards the top of this channel here in the 20 day, actually, let's take a look at the 30 day. We are towards the top of the channel here. So we could potentially see some selling off over these next couple of uh, days here. Maybe we do have another green day pushing us more towards the top here, maybe at around $26,000 before we do end up pulling back a little bit. And also guys, just take a look at this RSI level, right? We are a bit oversold or overbought rather in pretty much every single time frame here, right? On the 180, we can see it on the 90 day even we're a bit overbought right on the 20 day the 10 day literally every time frame here we are overbought and the fact that we are at the top of this channel right we could end up seeing some selling some profit taking some short-term money flooding out of the markets pulling us back here and of course guys take a look at these technicals for this upcoming week are we going to break out of this resistance potentially test those all-time highs potentially test that 26,200 resistance or are we going to end up pulling back testing the bottom of this trend line here, the support, and potentially testing that 50 SMA support as well. It's going to be a very, very interesting week this upcoming week. And we're also going to be talking about one of the swing trades I ended up taking today that is in the Dow 30. So we can see the Dow Jones did very well today, which is why I ended up taking this over the weekend swing trade and one of these stocks that we're going to be talking about here in a couple of minutes. So the NASDAQ, guys, we saw it didn't do as well as the uh, S&P and uh, the Dow Jones. And this is pretty much because the tech stocks today were red for the most part, right? We can see here Apple was down around 38 points today. Facebook got down to about $160 today. We saw Amazon 
was down around 1% 1 per, 1 today. Netflix was down quite a bit today, about 0.6%. You know, Google was down about $8, but Microsoft ended up doing pretty well today, honestly, and it's still holding this uptrend pattern very nicely. It pushed for a higher high, up around 1.23%. So I'm honestly looking for a potential trade in Microsoft if we do end up holding these 107, 108 levels as a new uh uh, support here because once we break out of an old resistance guys it becomes a new support so this could be a potential good trade potentially a swing trade over the next couple of weeks if we successfully hold this support with the next resistance being at around 111 and my guess that's going to offer around two three percent profit which is pretty solid for a couple weeks swing trade right we can see there exactly three percent profit so keep an eye on that guys i'm personally keeping an eye on Microsoft as well. But to get back to uh, slash NQ here, the NASDAQ composite, we had trouble getting above the uh, resistance from yesterday, I believe. If we can look at this 20 day, one hour chart here, we had a resistance from yesterday and the day before at around 70, 60. We popped up above it here. I I'm guessing this is when Trump was speaking. Then we ended up pulling back and we did not end up breaking above it, above it again towards the end of the market. But just because we're not breaking this resistance doesn't mean that we are downtrending or anything like that. We're still uptrending in price on this 20-day, one-hour chart, and we are towards the top of this channel, just like the SPX and just like the Dow Jones. So keep an eye on this level, guys. This is going to be a very key thing here. If we do break 70, 60 for the NASDAQ, that could be a breakout point that could send us back up to $7,100, which is the resistance from a couple of weeks back that we can see here on this 184 hour chart, right guys? We can see that very clearly. Back in the beginning of December, we were at around 7,100 and now we are testing that resistance here and we could potentially fill this little gap at around from around 7060 up to around 7100 if we do end up breaking this resistance this upcoming week and that'll put us right at the top of this channel where we could potentially experience a pullback especially because at that point the RSI is going to be overbought and we might just see you know the pullback from there who knows, guys? We just have to keep a very close eye on the futures, what large caps are doing pre-market hours, and of course, all of these different technicals that we talk about on this channel and different time frames, doing your analysis on different time frames. I can't stress this enough, guys. Very, very important. So, guys, you know, if we do end up breaking that 7,100 resistance this upcoming week, this four week trading week that we do have, we could end up trading between 7,100 and 7,200, which is, you know, the next resistance past 7,100 that we do see here, which is from back at, uh, what is that, at the beginning of um, November? So keep an eye on those levels, guys. So in terms of my trading today, guys, I actually didn't catch any moves this morning because I was at a doctor's appointment, right? So I couldn't day trade today, which is why I ended up taking an over the weekend swing trade. And I do plan on holding this for a couple of weeks here in Johnson and Johnson, guys. So I pretty much missed uh, the entire morning here. I missed, I didn't really watch, I didn't watch Trump's speech at all, to be completely honest with you guys. I missed it, but I did go back, read some articles on what happened, and he pretty much talked about building that wall, the national emergency, and drugs. He wants to stop drugs, guys. He was talking about how he claimed that there was a 26-person murder uh, back at the uh, the border a couple of weeks ago, but no one really found facts on that. They said it could be drug-related or cartel-related, uh, rather, and who knows what ended up happening there with that 26-person uh, slaying, but he was talking about how he wants to stop drugs from coming in from Mexico through the border, right? It's very, very obvious why he wants to build that wall to stop the drugs. And another very interesting thing he said, uh, he talked to President uh, Xi, the president of China. He was talking to him, like, how do you, how do you um, stop people from selling drugs if you have a 1.4 billion person population? And the president of China responded by saying, we give people the death penalty 
who sell drugs. So if Trump starts, you know, if Trump starts giving people out here the death penalty, which I'm sure he can't do that. There's a lot of legislative stuff, legal stuff that has to go behind, um, you know, making that possible. But that would be pretty crazy. I don't see that happening, guys. Like you can't just force states, the whole, you know, federal court system to give uh, people the death penalty overnight like that. I'm sure there's a long process. I'm not a lawyer. I don't really know a lot about law, but I'm just assuming that you can't do that. But I guess he just said that um, to make a point, uh, you know, because he, the president of China really did say, you know, according to President Trump, when they met back in Argentina a couple of weeks ago, that that's what he said, you know, how he's stopping people from selling drugs. You know, it's pretty interesting. Thing, but you know the whole gist of the uh, the speech from what I got was about that you know stopping drugs building that border and really he just declared a national emergency for that so drop a comment down below let me know what you guys think about this you know is this wall gonna get built who knows guys Trump is relentless we can't deny the fact that this man is relentless this guy really really wants to build this wall and who knows he might be able to pull it off let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section but what i ended up trading today guys like i said i did not end up catching any moves today not much trading for me and i, and I didn't want to you know force a trade later on in the day when i did get back from my doctor's appointment because i didn't really see any opportunities at that point the markets were already up so i ended up just taking a swing position at a around 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time here about an hour and a half into the market you know once I did get back I wanted to trade J&J &J as a swing I've been eyeing it up for a couple of uh, days here and we finally got the confirmation this morning and what I was waiting for guys to be quite frank with you and if you guys watch the videos you probably saw this I was waiting for the break above 135 for potential runner right and we actually ended up getting that this morning pre-market hours like I said I missed this initial pump because I was at the doctor's office, but I ended up taking a position at 11 o'clock, roughly 10:30, 11 o'clock, when we started to pull back a bit and consolidate at around 135.50, 135.60. I ended up taking a little bit of position here. We pulled back even more from when I got in, added a little bit more down here at about 135.50. So right now, guys, I'm just slowly scaling in to J and J and I'm up a bit on the position, not much, like 1%, literally not even, not even 1%, like 0.5% right now. And I do plan on just swinging this one for maybe two, three weeks based on these technicals, guys. I do want to get, you know, probably back up to maybe $140 is my target right now for selling J and J, which will give me about a nice three, four percent profit, three percent profit on this swing trade guys so the goal here is to hold this if we do end up breaking below this level of 134 i'm going to potentially cut losses there because that's going to be a break of pattern if we're breaking below the support but if we pull back a bit on monday or tuesday rather we end up holding that a little bit as a uh, support level again that's going to be a good opportunity if we start to push back up from there to potentially add more money for me in terms of J&J. &J. And when I do swing trade, guys, I always talk about this in these videos. When I'm swing trading, I scale into my positions. I don't go all in right off the bat. So I have the leverage of adding more money at a lower price to lower my cost average. If the technicals are still pointing to an uptrend, if the plan that I put in place in the beginning of my trade is still intact, right? Let's say if we break down here, guys, I'm not going to put more money. I'm going to cut losses. But if we get here, slowly start to curl back up, that's going to be, you know, according to my plan, a point where I would want to add more money. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, right? If you scale in with 10, 15%, at first and then wait a couple of days to add more money and let's say the trade doesn't go your way you're going to lose less money than you would have lost if you went in let's say all of your money that you want to put in the trade and then it went down in price right so you guys kind of understand 
what I'm saying here. That is what I ended up doing in terms of J&J uh, &J here, Johnson and Johnson. Some other big movers that we saw today that we also talked about in yesterday's video, one being Gush, guys. This one trades based upon XOP. This is an ETF that went up 8% today, guys, and whenever XOP is going up in price, Gush is going up in price as well. And what did I say in yesterday's video, guys? I said if we break the resistance of this channel, that could indicate a run in XOP, and that's exactly what ended up happening, which is why, hence, Gush did very, very well today, up 8%. So I'm going to be watching Gush next week for potential continuation if we do end up, you know, holding above this channel like we do see is happening after market hours here and pretty much the whole entire day today, right? So another one that ended up doing very well today was UWT. This one was up around 95 cents, up around 7%. And this is another uh, ETF here, leveraged 3X ETF that trades based upon crude oil. And whenever crude oil is going up in price, UWT is going up in price as well. So we do see the massive uptrend that we're seeing here in crude oil. We pulled back all the way down to $51 a couple of days ago, bounced on that support, and from there, it's been running. We just broke around $55, uh, the resistance here in crude oil. So guys, if we do end up holding this new uh, this old resistance now as a new support. This could be the next level where we potentially pop up into the higher 50s, right? Maybe 58, 59, or potentially the 60s, which will open up UWT as a very, very nice day trade or a potential short-term swing trade. Although, let me warn you guys, these aren't meant to be swing traded. They're mostly meant to be day traded, but you can get away with swing trading these. Just understand it's extremely, extremely risky because they could open up 10% to the red one day after you holding them overnight, which is why I personally just day trade these. And if we do end up pushing back up towards the $60 level, guys, in terms of crude oil, you know, that's going to open up a lot of margin for day trades in terms of uh, UWT here. So we saw Cron today, pretty solid day in terms of Cron, up around 2.26%. It does seem like we're seeing some uh, resistance here at the previous resistance at around 2130. If we do end up breaking this next week, guys, which is very possible, we could end up running and finally testing those previous highs at around $25 that we were at back in the beginning of February. So Cron, Solid day. CGC, an even better day here for the marijuana stock. This one is up 3.12% at the close, up around 1.43%. We ended up breaking the 50 SMA resistance today, which is honestly the last resistance that we needed to see broken above for us to test that previous resistance at around $51. So this upcoming week, I'm going to be watching CGC for the potential fill up to around $51 from where we are right now, let's say from $48 up to $51. That'll give us, what is that? It's not showing us because it's blocking off. Let's see if we, uh, we go like this a little bit. That should give us about a, let's say, I know why it's not letting me click because I'm on the freaking channel thing. I, I hate doing that. I always do that by accident, guys. But we can see from $48, let's take a look here. From $48 up to around, you know, $51, that's going to give us, <coughs> excuse me, that's going to give us about a 6% potential for profit here in terms of CGC. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. I hope everybody out there had a great trading day today and a whole entire trading week. Let me know down below in the comment section how you guys ended up doing this week. I would love to know. And it does suck that we do have a closed market on Monday, but still expect a video on Sunday and on Monday talking about what I'm watching, my plans for the upcoming week, and a technical analysis on the overall market. And of course, if you guys want me to talk about any stocks, any ETFs for those two videos coming up, drop a comment down below on this video. Literally, go down below right now, type a comment of any ticker symbols, you want me to talk about in those videos and I'd gladly, gladly talk about those. So expect the video Sunday, Monday, and tomorrow. I do have another video coming out for you guys on three ways to invest 
in your 20s, so keep an eye out for that video. I'll catch you all in tomorrow's video. I hope you enjoy this video and your whole entire weekend, long weekend if you guys have off on Monday. Peace out. I'll catch you all later.